casinos closed in mass globally. And so we really had no idea what, what was to come. And so we went through several weeks of uh, getting our legs under us, trying to decide uh, how was the business going to evolve? How serious was the problem? And what we learned is that, uh, as is the case with, with most big problems, it presents really unique opportunities uh, for change and uh, adaptation. So we made a decision as a management team very quickly to adapt our business. And uh, if you had heard us or come to see us at URSA this year or FIBO, which obviously uh, neither happened, we would have talked to you about Stages Cloud, which was a new product of ours, uh, a cloud-based service for the studio and for the floor of the club, which we're very excited about. We continue to be very excited about. Once COVID hit us, uh, we clearly could see that um, you know, the, the opportunity to help our commercial customers address the rapidly changing and growing home fitness market was going to be an important decision to make. And so we, we made that decision and we invested further in Stages Cloud to create Stages Studio now. And effectively, we've created an entire business around this um, uh, decision of ours, which Mike Catterall leads. Um, and we're very excited about it. And simply put, I think many of you may know that, that we have a, brand, a positioning in our company uh, that goes like this. We feel like uh, the business is about your brand, not our brand. And we're very intentional in saying this. We've actually even... Uh, use that in some of our marketing materials, our website, and so forth, because we really do feel like, as an important member of uh, the commercial fitness industry, our focus needs to be on our commercial customers. And uh, what we're seeing now is, um, you know, a large number of companies who are creating their own brands to market to the consumer in response to this demand for home fitness, and it's a very big market and it's growing. We have made the decision to not address that market opportunity directly as our own brand. Rather, our decision has been to partner and work with our commercial customers to help them develop their brands, to help them extend their brands into the homes of their members uh, as they uh, determine which which path is best to take. So, Chris, I'll stop there. I could go on for a bit. I know we're going to be limited, but that's really the essence of what we decided to do in the early days of this. And um, now we now we uh, need to um, partner with our our customers to understand how they want to uh, go forward with us. And we hope we hope that is uh, on strategy for them. Yeah, I love that messaging, Jim. That just Hope that resonates with all of our customers that are watching today and and in the future. Um, Stages Studio was two years in the making, and that was you know, like just like you said, Jim. Um, uh, Stages Cloud was going to be you know our big focus in the in the trade shows um, this past year, um, but Stages Studio was two years in the making. And um, Mike, can you just share like how Stages pivoted? And accelerated this technology and 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 the the focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think two years ago we we looked at the market and and the technology and and where we currently were in our platforms and said the future is going to be a combination of virtualizing as studios expand and actually making it more simple for our commercial customers to be able to run their studio applications. And then as part of that, we've been building this virtual cloud environment and, and Stages Cloud, which we'll talk a little more detail how Stages Studio sits on top of that. But then with COVID, we were actually able to pivot it and take that same underlying technology. And instead of pointing it at the studio, the virtualization we were already doing for the studios, now we're able to then take that and, and move it into the app, which then becomes Studio Now and allows us to actually start integrating your customers at home with you in the studio. So the overall goal here is really one ecosystem that 
you are creating for your members where it's again as jim was talking about um, as it's your brand you're reaching out to them you're creating those communities you're not just streaming them data that they're not watching or they're watching as if they're watching a movie so we were able that virtualization and all the work we've done on the cloud platform that allows us to to create these virtual environments has then allowed us over the last six months to pivot into into what is now the studio now product and i know we're going to talk a lot more about that but yeah, that's at least at a high level well, that that's great. Can you just spend it just a couple more minutes, Mike, just talking about mm -hmm. the stages ecosystem, really what that what that means? That word's thrown out around a lot. Yeah, just yeah, a yeah it's a dangerous. It's a dangerous word. Um, so, and a couple of things on that. We're really, you know, the the bet that Jim is 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 placing in this in this area of the of the commercial fitness space is that. The, the studios that in, and the clubs that are going to be in chains that are going to be successful into the future, we're focused on creating an ecosystem for you or helping you create that ecosystem where your members are, even post-COVID, whatever that is, are going to take a combination of at-home in-studio classes. So not making those look like two separate you know, two separate experiences for them. It's one experience for you, for your members, right? So, for example, I am going into the studio and I have my favorite instructor and I'm taking their class. But then I'm also going at home and I'm connecting my home bike or ultimately connecting, and we'll talk about this a little more, connecting my treadmill, or my rowing machine, or whatever it is. And I'm still taking some classes from my favorite instructor. So now I'm able to create that community, interact with the studios so that I'm not just consuming, I'm actually being part of, 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 of that studio community. And I think when we talk about that ecosystem, it's all of that. It's how do we integrate into your CRM so that you're making sure you're managing that experience for the customers? How do we allow you to actually connect bikes at home? How do we allow you to you know, stay close to your favorite instructors? And then even taking that further, how do we allow a, for example, traditionally bike boutique studio that only offers cycling, how do we offer, how can now they expand their offerings and add yoga or add some kind of hit class that people can take at home? So really creating that whole sense of, of, of additional offering that's not just in the short term, but that's what the long term, what the long term view is going to look like or the long term reality is going to be. So. Well, I'm excited to, to just talk and share exactly what the app is all about. But before that, um, Jim, do you want to just give a like a couple words on how like simplifying the virtual process is important for our customers? Well, it's obviously um, a time of transition for our commercial customers in terms of thinking of their business model differently. And you know, uh, the industry has grown up around attracting a community of members to their facilities. And obviously, uh, some of that's changing. And it really was, the change was really underway prior to COVID. We were already seeing quite a number of consumer-oriented um, fitness companies uh, with varying levels of success uh, selling the concept of combining home fitness or or replacing the fitness facility with a home fitness subscription. And I, I have to say that I personally believe that for the commercial fitness industry, this is a very dangerous trend in terms of uh, new brands and new value propositions from consumer-oriented brands effectively hijacking membership dues from the commercial facility to that consumer-only brand. And I personally believe this is a threat to the commercial fitness industry. Uh, I feel like the commercial uh, fitness industry, the studio industry should take this very seriously and view these uh, brands for what they are, which is seeking the same dollars for, for membership that uh, the commercial fitness, uh, fitness industry has built an entire industry around. So as that has been taking place, uh, we felt like uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of pieces that, that can make this very complicated. There's the equipment piece, there's the uh, content piece, there's marketing, uh, you know, there can be a lot of expenses, uh, operating expenses attached to this. 
not the least of which is the opportunity to you know, uh, deliver that content or deliver that experience from the facility to the member's uh, home. So our strategy has been, uh, as, as mentioned at the outset, is, is to create uh, a, a number of different choices, ranging from uh, standard inside the box uh, selections in our, from our cloud service to highly customized enterprise-wide type solutions. So we have the ability uh, to invest in, in the way that the customer sees fit for their strategy. Again, it's back to, it's about your brand, not our brand. And some customers have one idea on how to solve this problem. Others have different ideas. And we've, what we've done is we've built a platform that can be very, very flexible. And we've surrounded uh, the platform with highly talented people uh, like you, Kristen, and like Mike, and many others that, that aren't on this call. And you know, what I would say is that you know, we, we wanna make this as simple as possible on the technology side and on the modality side. So the fitness club can offer, do the same things they do inside their building, which is offer a, a, a great service with great instructors and really create this new model, which is a combination of at-home fitness in parallel you know, combined with the fitness facility. And we believe that's the best type of strategy uh, that you can adopt. And again, I gotta say, I, I, I think for commercial customers out there that are listening to this, I will always make the point that let's not let these consumer brands take your revenue. And that's what they wanna do. That's exactly what they wanna do. And we need to be better and we need to compete together to prevent that from happening. And so, uh, you know, I get a little worked up about this, frankly, because this is our industry. This is our industry and we need to defend it and we need to build it together for the long haul. Wow, fabulous. Well, I think you, you open the door right now um, to Mike to explain exactly what Stu Stages Studio Now is all about. Um, Yep. Mike, can you just like kind of just how does it work? Um, what can our um, what can our customers expect? Yeah, and you know I think going back to one of the one of the earlier comments is we've really created this product that is a couple of different you know, feature sets or mini products within it between Studio and Studio Now. So the goal and the way that it's been designed and built. So I'm very handsy. Um, the way it's been designed and built is the experience from an instructor point of view whether and from a studio point of view is the same whether I'm dealing with physically in the studio or I'm dealing with my, my members at home. The same, the flip side for that, even more importantly, is the member experience is the same, right? If you, the, we, when we built studio now, I'm going to take a little bit of a step back. We looked and said, what are, there's a couple of pillars to make this successful into the future. One, it has to be able to interact with your CRM. We're not trying to be, you know, our, our our lane is not being your CRM provider. We're not trying to take that away. So interacting with your CRM so that you're doing all of those things and, and dealing with, the, with your members like you do today. But then just layering on, now I can actually do uh, the virtual piece for, for folks at home. Secondly, I, I need to be able to deliver content and either my own content or even be able to expand content and then potentially create additional revenue streams that way. Thirdly, how am I going to do social interaction? And that social interaction may be in the class, right? A lot of people are obviously doing on demand and everybody has to have an on demand, uh, on demand option at some point, but being able to do scheduling classes so that we're all going in and we're taking the classes together, even though we're at home, getting that interaction. How do we then keep layering on additional social interaction over the course of time? And getting people to come back, right, and getting them to interact with their favorite instructors. And then the 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 last pillar there is is the connectivity. So I'm at home. I'm also and and I know Jim will talk a little bit about this. I, I want to be able to get either a stages bike or some other piece of equipment at home that I that I can connect into the studio into the studio now app. And uh, a, a key piece of that is we've taken a line in the sand, and this is part of the the. The overall stages philosophy, it's about your brand. I mean, we'd obviously love you on our equipment as much as possible, but we will let you connect anything, right? The most important thing is that our commercial customers provide as many opportunities to get their members into the Studio Now app as possible. So that may be connecting a third-party bike or a third-party, ultimately, whatever, right? 
so so that's I think Im important in this. From a so that's at least kind of a, a little bit of background from a studio now point of view. We really look at it at, at, at three different levels of how you deliver that content. So the first is just a scheduled. So I'm going to schedule multiple classes, and the way that we're architected is we're going to have multiple virtual rooms. Some of our customers are looking to do a room per per instructor or a room per type of class. For, you know, whether it's a yoga class or a or a cycling class or whatever it is. So I can have multiple different you know, types of schedules, and then within that, I have my pre-recorded content. And that includes everything that you would expect from, you know, from stages. That allows you to do the plans, all of what some people traditionally would call the profiles across the bottom, where we are doing and staying in our zones. And if I'm doing a threshold test at home, we're able to do those tests at home, all the same functionality as if I was physically sitting in the studio. So I can run that. And when we're in the class, I can see who else is in the class. And we're starting to add on more and more social interaction related to that. The second option then will be a live stream on a scheduled basis. So that's with a live instructor. And uh, we'll come back to that one because I think it's important for people to understand that gets really complicated very quickly. Um, as Jim said, we've got people way smarter than me on the technology side handling all the live streaming stuff, but we're trying to make it easy. So if you want just a basic live streaming option, plug and play is a dangerous word, but it literally, I have a PC and I'm selecting my microphone, I'm selecting my camera and off I go. So making it easy for you to be able to do the live stream versus someone who actually then has built a pre-built studio, has a really complicated encoding and all that, that type of front-end equipment, then they can stream it directly to us. And then we'll have both, both options covered depending what your business model is. And then you can evolve over time. And then the last one would obviously be just a pure video on demand where I'm going in and creating an experience, right? And here's where things start becoming different to what a lot of the competitors are doing is the experience is not just I'm watching a video that's pre-recorded. When I'm taking that experience, I'm still taking a plan, right? That plan, that experience may be I'm taking a, a ride through Italy and then it has a plan against it and included in that is a threshold test so I can reset my zones. Uh, all of those functions that you would get in the studio, you're now getting at home, right? So that's at least at a high level what's what's baked into the, the Studio Now product. Sorry, that was a lot of data, sorry. No, I mean that that was amazing. Um, there's like I had a, a lot couple, of coffee. <laughs> there's a couple features for me that you know, like I just want to to reinforce and and highlight um, for those that are listening. And and one the 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 key differentiator for us is the connectivity, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can you know you can be streaming your content via. Facebook or Instagram or Zoom, but you cannot connect a heart rate monitor and you cannot connect a power meter. Um, and that th those are, are critical. We know that our customers love the data, right? Like yep. that is that is so cool. So we know that people are excited about that. Um, it's also cool that you don't have to have the hardware. Like we have this cloud that, you know, that we have um, been working on and, and is the ecosystem to what we've got. And that enables, you know, an instructor to go and film from a park or from their living room that you don't have to have all of this hardware. So those are just two, two of the things that I thought I would just um, reinforce there. But um, yeah, and I think if you, without diving, without diving into tech, into technical stuff, if you look at it, you, you have some options, right? And what people are doing, you talk about Facebook Live and, and you know, Vimeo and some of the streaming options is, <coughs> excuse me, companies that are really good at streaming, right? And, they, and they're good at getting content out there, whether it's on demand or live, and you're really good at streaming, but then you don't have the connectivity. The other options there are, you can do these video calls, which are fine, but the quality is not good and it's not designed to scale. So, and then, in, and then you're also not having the connectivity. So you've really got to look, when you take a step back, you've got to say, I've got my CRM and how am I going to interact with my customers? How am I going to connect? How am I going to stream and be able to potentially scale, right? I'm now not just looking at my geographic area, I'm looking across the country or ultimately, hopefully, you know, outside of the borders of that. How do I scale it? Which then throws all these video calls out of the, out of the, out of the works. And then how am I going to get that interaction between myself and and you know and my members and, and and really create that community and even more than that interaction it's I go into the studio I take a class I get my stats I get my workout details I'm at home that's being added to my stats I'm I'm still getting that same overall experience coming out of that I'm not picking and choosing um, doing 
you know, where, where I'm getting it from. We, we want to simplify that for how the, uh, the commercial customer delivers it and simplify that from a member point of view. There's just so much noise out there. I want to go to one place. I want to consume it from one place and that will tell me whether I'm going into the studio or not going to the studio. So. Yeah. And that's the connectivity pieces, you know, we really want to, to mm -hmm. reinforce too. I mean, we want to make sure that those members stay connected with their favorite, favorite instructors. Um, I know in my, my own personal club, like my new noon yoga class is like my favorite ever thing. And if I can't go to that class, I can take it from home. Um, so keeping that connectivity with your members and with your instructors is what this app is really going to provide. Jim, do you have anything else that you want to add on to like kind of like your favorite piece of Stages yeah. Studio? Well, I, just to build on something Mike said, uh, you know, we, we have there's little things about our complete offering that are going to be different than. Um, competitors of ours who are offering perhaps cloud services or live streaming capability. I, I would submit that because we are in the industry and we are a cycling company first and foremost, that's, that's what got us to this point is the stage of cycling mission, uh, which is to provide the best possible experience for the cycling consumer and the cycling facility. And so things like power meters and connectivity and the fine points of cycling, the cycling experience within the home, which we think that the best scenario is when that experience replicates what's in the studio, which is a primary focus of ours. So what I would tell our customers in the industry is all of these things are important. You know, so a cloud service can be hugely helpful, but really the, the, the cloud service has to deliver a great experience and that includes the content and the experience on the bike and mm -hmm. i think for the really successful models around the world uh this will this will require all of the pieces and getting all of them right and i think what we can offer is really that that complete solution um you know the kind of the integrated promise versus just pieces of it that can come together for whatever reason. And, you know, we're part of this industry. We're gonna be in this industry for the long haul. I would argue that that in a time like this, uh, there's companies that are popping up uh, that may be interested in, in fitness, uh, but maybe they're just interested in the uh, uh, kind of the rise of the tide on, on the immediacy of the opportunity, but that's not us. We, we've made the choice to invest in this for the long haul. Frankly, we, we think this combination of home and facility is here to stay. And for the uh, commercial uh, clubs and studios who, who really take time to, to thoughtfully put this together and build it for the long haul, I, I, I frankly, it's gonna, it's gonna be a net positive increase in membership for them Cycling, uh, consumer-oriented cycling is very hot around the world. I mean, in every part of the world. There will be members of the household uh, that maybe haven't been members of the facility or they haven't been in into the studio that, that will be interested in cycling in the home. So I think if this is done correctly and, and uh, different options are uh, provided, um, you know, this, this should be viewed as a way to increase membership not just maintain uh, existing membership. And again, I, 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 the word of warning for me simply is we're in a competitive battle to keep members in their, in their clubs and studios, and we wanna work with all of our customers to make sure that, that uh, they come out ahead here. And that's, that's why we've done what we've done. Uh, we haven't hunkered down during the pandemic. We've invested, uh, we will con continue to invest. You can count on us to come to you with uh, the latest and greatest as it relates to cycling. And that's not just about the modality, it's going to be about the delivery of the experience. And, and that's where we're going to be state of the art, category leaders, and uh, really excited about it. Uh, yeah, was and Kristen, maybe that. just to add, sorry, to add, add one thing to that is, I think it's important as Jim talks about long-term, 
you know, this is a long term. We've obviously pivoted and created a, essentially a new product for the home in the last six months, even though we've been working on the infrastructure and the stages cloud piece for the last couple of years. But it is an evolutionary process. So, you know, the initial goals of, yeah, we can get yoga, we can get that delivery, we can get that non cycling pieces. But from a connectivity point of view, initially coming out with cycling and heart rate, because we already know how to do all that. But as we, we look at that long term strategy and, and, and roadmap with our, with our com commercial customers, it is adding on treadmills. It is adding on rowing machines. There's a lot of connectivity pieces that I think if you look at and you say, okay, here's where we are now. And this comes back to some of the earlier statements. Like in the beginning, when COVID happened, you know, a lot of us, like, what do we do? Okay, we just got to get content out there. We've got to try and keep hold of our members. We've got to try and stop this revenue loss, right? So you, we don't look at it as where it is now. There is also, what does that future look like? As we add more and more social interaction, as we add more and more connectivity pieces, as we add more and more options around the content side, then you know that's it, it is really a long-term continued partnership like we've always done at stages. But I, I'm looking at you know, the end of 20, what are we, 2020 as the starting point of really the future of, of this virtual, semi-virtual world of ours. That was a little corny, but whatever. <laughs> Well, appreciate it. Well, this is such a good talk. Um, and, you know, we really, first of all, we welcome any questions if anybody wants to put a question in the chat. Um, if anyone wants to learn more and how we can, um, you know, utilize this platform for your gym or for your studio, obviously um, we would love to talk to you. So please, please, please reach out. Um, but, um, Thanks, Jim and Mike. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to share this great information with with everyone. And um, you know, I know that um, it is just going to be um, received and excited to get it into the marketplace. Um, and and there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of excitement around it. So thank you so much for giving everybody a preview today. You're welcome. Very good. I say one more thing. Uh, so yeah, so one more thing, just to be a, a little, maybe even a little clearer on it's about your brand. So especially for you know for existing customers and and flight customers, we've spent a lot of time looking at um, making sure that, for lack of a better term, the reskinning. So as this continues to evolve as a product, it's going to look less and less even now when your customers go in. We want them to have that experience from home that they're not going into a stages product, right? They're coming to your product. So there's a lot of work going on from a branding point of view that's just gonna continue to get more and more configurable uh, for how that look and feel so that ultimately, you know, your customers will quite frankly, not even know that we're, that we're there other than they may know that we're there. So I think that's important for the, for the long term as well. And that is a huge focus of how everything is being designed. Um, so. Great, well, thanks Mike. I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> I don't see any um, questions in the chat box, so I'm just, I think we could say goodbye and um, thank you very thank much. You. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye.